We're trying to find the following limit, and whenever this is the case, it's usually a good idea to try to plug in the value that x is approaching first. So let's plug x equals negative 1 into this expression. And let's see, negative 1 squared is 1, so in the numerator we get 1 minus 1. In the denominator we get negative 1 plus 1. Unfortunately, we get 0 over 0 which is an indeterminate form. If we had gotten infinity over infinity, that is also an indeterminate form. Or if we had gotten zero times infinity, that's another indeterminate form. There will be others. But basically, if we get any of these answers for our limit, it means we just don't know the answer yet. Zero over zero can be anything. So for now, what we have to do whenever we get an indeterminate form is we just need to do some algebra. And you'll notice that x squared minus one is a binomial. It's a difference of squares. And x squared minus one can be factored into x plus 1, x minus 1. If you're wondering about this difference of squares thing, I will make sure that there is a video popping up right now that you can click to get a little bit more information. But what this factoring allows us to do is it allows us to cancel the factors of x plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator, leaving us with the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x minus 1. And the question is, now can we plug in x equals negative 1? We can. We get negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, which is not an indeterminate form, so we have our answer. So you might be wondering what just happened there maybe on a graph. So I'll really quickly try to give you an answer to that question. If we graph this original function up here, it would actually look just like this function that we got down here after our cancellation. This function down here is a line with the slope of 1 and a y-intercept of negative 1, so that line looks something like this. The only difference between the original function and the function that I just graphed is that the original function doesn't exist at x equals negative 1 because there's a denominator that becomes 0 at that value. So right here, just at this value x equals negative 1, we have a hole or what we call a removable discontinuity, meaning that this original function does not exist at x equals negative 1. We determined that here. However, if you do a little bit of algebra and do some cancellations, we find that this original function reduces down to the function x minus 1, but we can't forget that this function technically doesn't actually exist at x equals negative 1, so that's where the hole comes from. Now, as far as limits are concerned, again, if you imagine yourself as an ant walking along this function from the left or from the right, as our x value approaches negative 1, our y value approaches negative 2, and that's the answer that we found right here. Okay, I hope that that explanation helps you out, and I will see you in the next calculus problem of the day.